two. Hello and welcome back to Somewhere Under the Radar. This is episode two and today we have a new studio in a clip I shot last week with my brother Jay who came by to Berlin for a visit. But first, here's the song. Episode 2 and today we're talking about this. This is Jay. This is my brother. I am. 
he uh, he's visiting from Israel. Jake, you and I are simulatory simula simula. Are we? Aren't we? You don't expect to die like, before your thousandth birthday or something like that, right? What do? What don't I didn't expect it? Well, how would you phrase it? Man? I don't know. Do I it? But you have a saying, it, right? I mean, we both quit smoking. We did. We don't want to die prematurely. But what I'm asking is, when you look into the future, there is some kind of intersection point where we expect that I mean, life sure. extension treatments will be available. I am not so sure. You can't tell in advance when the Werner being invented that singularity concept. He said that he can't envisage the future. He doesn't know what is going to happen. It might be some kind of a singularity thing, and it might be that acceleration will decrease in rate. But some anti-aging treatments are already available. Only this week it's been advertised that one woman has gone the first ever anti-aging gene therapy to extend her telomeres. Well, I haven't read that article. I'm not sure exactly what she does and how efficient that is. And telomere length is not the only thing. You have a lot of other things which are leading to getting old and dying like garbage inside your cell, garbage between your cells, the immune system deteriorating. There are a lot of things which cause people to get old. But there's also a lot of funding into research on preventing old old stuff. I mean, Google has gotten into this business and a lot of other... True, but just because you're researching into something doesn't mean that you know which, where you're going. It might be that it will be soon enough for us, it might be soon enough for our parents, it might not be soon enough for our children, we don't know. Or our dogs. Or our dogs. There is one uh, startup that specifically works on life extension for dogs, saying that they are good proxies for humans and less of a problem bureaucracy wise, and uh, that they trying out life extension treatments on them, and them will give immediate benefit to the humans as well. It might be possible. There were some successful tests in mice. Just because their usual lifespan is just two years, so it's possible to make uh, rapid advances and, and to know where you've got anything. They doubled the life expectancy of mice that went un underwent some kind of treatments. But this is complicated, and it's trial and error. And usually, it takes a few trials before you get it right. And to know if you're successful, it takes the full length of a human being. So you can, in general, expect that it would be at least a few generations until they get it right. Which means it, it, it is too late for us. Not behave as if I expect it to happen. But behaving as if I expect it to happen means taking the best care of myself I can until it does, don't it? Uh, it might help, yes. So behaving as if life extension would be available in my lifetime is uh, actually the best way to ensure that it does. Yes, but even if you exercise and eat well and don't smoke, etc., it won't add more than a few years. It's not that big of a difference. It's, it's also a lot of luck. Uh, speaking of quitting smoking, you have any hobby you want to tell our viewers about it? I started vaping uh, about three weeks ago, and it's fun. So I found it's quite rare in Israel to find a place which actually sells the product. And I found one, and I went inside, and I told the uh, person inside that I just had a cigarette and I wanted to be my last, and it was. <laughs> and I just bought uh, a vape and some juice. Perfectly. If they don't have an urge to smoke a cigarette or even understand why to inhale smoke, stinky smoke, when you can inhale instead all kind of delicious vapor. So, if you're trying to quit smoking, here's your easy way out, it seems. Could be. Could be. And um, just today or yesterday, the FDA decided that all vaping products come into this realm of tobacco products category. Which probably means that this industry is dead because the price of actually manufacturing one of these vapes or one of these e juices is going to be so high that the only companies capable of producing these will be big tobacco. And they already do manufacture these products, they are horrible, and their only reason for existence is to convince people to go back to smoking cigarettes. But there's, there's still going to be the option of purchasing something not produced inside the US. Of course, there will be a black market, but as a legitimate option, it might very well die soon. Do you see it becoming something like marijuana being an illegal substance? Something like that. It might take the place of drugs 
drugs will become legal, or at least using them won't be a criminal activity, and vaping will become such. It, it looks very bad. The decision is very, very bad, but it's not the end of the story. There are all kinds of legal battles going on, and I hope the outcome will be fine, because all the research is pointing to the fact that this is something like 95% safer, 99% safer. I mean, th there might be things in, in vaping which are not safe. There might be certain kinds of coil materials which are dangerous. There might be all kinds of materials that are put into e-juices which are not safe. But you always can find a combination which is safe. So I don't believe there is really a reason to ban these products. Mm. What was the they want to talk about? The head points. I had points, I, I had them memorized. I didn't write them down because of papers. Speaking of death, Yes, it was the Memorial Day for the Holocaust two days ago. Yep. How does it feel to spend it in Berlin? Good. Is it better to do that here than in Israel? Um, yes. The discussion over the Holocaust has become so irrational, and it's best for me at least to talk about it. The lessons that I can take out of it, I think I don't need a Memorial Day for because they're important for me in, in general. What may I ask? Be a racist? Don't, be Don't kill people? <laughs> Is a solution to anything? <laughs> uh, do you think it teaches us something about how to behave under fascist regimes or under military regimes? Yeah, I think just because we have this one example of where fascism can go as an extreme point, we can all be more careful and vigilant and try to look for the signs that this is the direction we're going. And I think this is happening everywhere. This is uh, happening in the US, this is happening in, in Europe. Uh, people are noticing and going over checklists of is this fascist or proto-fascist or quasi-fascist behavior and being careful and, and noticing it. And it's, uh, it's, it's a sign we're going up. Do you think it will help? Yes, I think it will. It's a very slow process, but we're becoming more involved politically as a race.